go into the first step, which is glycolysis, glucose splitting, glucose sugar splitting. Okay, so the first step, which is glycolysis or known as sugar splitting, is to break the glucose into two molecules of pyruvate. Okay, so we have C here, glucose become two molecules of pyruvate, which is a three carbon sugar. Okay, so this process occurs in the cytoplasm, which has two major phases. The first phase, the energy investment phase, the second phase, which is the payoff phase. Investment phase, as you see here, invest, in which two ATP are used. Okay. Followed by a payoff phase where four ATPs are produced. So glycolysis can occur whether or not oxygen is present. So okay, so this is the uh, phase that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so we have first glucose. Okay, the investment phase. Glucose, okay, in which two ATPs are used, and then later on, after that, once glucose is broken down, okay, you will move into the energy payoff phase in which four ATPs are produced and two NADH and two molecules of pyruvate. So these are the product from glycolysis. Okay, so the net product that that the net glucose that are produced, you have from one glucose molecule, you produce two molecules of pyruvate and four ATPs are formed, two are used to get a two net ATP, okay, and two NAD plus are reduced into two NADH, okay, so these are the product of glyco. Okay. okay, so we look the first into the energy investment phase, okay, in which two molecules of ATPs are used. So you imagine, okay, you've learned in enzyme, okay, you still remember this graph, okay, so you still remember, hopefully you still remember, Okay, so, so this is the energy level. So this is the activation energy. So you can imagine that the investment phase is the energy required to break the bond of the glucose molecule. Glucose itself is a stable molecule. Okay, it won't broke down, it will, it will not break down without any any uh, reasons. Okay, so as you see here, ATP are used to make the glucose molecule less stable. So glucose plus ATP in the first stage with the enzyme hexokinase okay, will produce glucose 6-phosphate. Okay, you see here. The phosphate has bind to the glucose molecule. Okay, so the glucose molecule, the amount of energy in this glucose molecule is not yet to overcome this activation energy. It must require additional energy. So therefore, since you see here, glucose has only one CH2OH. It can ATP can bind at this site only, okay? It cannot react on another. So, that, therefore, okay, this glucose 6-phosphate must reshuffle its structure to become its isomer, which is fructose 6-phosphate. Through the process of isomerization, enzyme phosphor glucose isomerase okay they can form additional ch2oh on this fructose 6 phosphate this atp can react on so that is why you see here additional atp becomes glucose 6 phosphate 
reshuffle their body imagine that it's a transformer reshuffle to get to get an extra hand you can imagine glucose has one hand okay you can only buy to one phosphate so they must reshuffle its body to become fructose 6-phosphate which have two and to hold two phosphate molecules okay so ATP is not ATP are used with the enzyme phosphor fructokinase to become fructose 1 6 by phosphate. So at this stage, this fructose 1 6 by phosphate is very unstable. This they have high amount of energy. Okay, and the addition of the enzyme aldolase breaks this glucose molecule into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate or G3B and also dihydroxyacetone phosphate DHAP so these are the product of the breaking down of fructose 1,6 by phosphate okay, you see here the purpose of this investment phase is to break the bond of the glucose molecule Okay, you can imagine energy is energy, ATP is energy, they transfer to glucose, glucose becomes high energy. So they help to break the bond of the glucose molecule to release additional energy, which is the 4 ATP. So you can imagine uh, the glucose is like this uh, enzyme graph you learned in chapter 4. Okay, 2 ATP are used, this is 4 ATP. 2 ATP to break the glucose into G3P and DHAP. Okay, so the enzyme isomerase helps to uh, convert both, okay, either one, okay, either DHAP to G3P or G3P into DHAP. Basically, these two are isomers to one another. Okay. Okay, so this is the steps, step, is uh, part of description. Okay, see, glucose, with ATP in the investment phase, ATP, uh, the phosphate binds to the TH2OH group, okay, the group here, become glucose 6-phosphate, the enzyme is hexokinase. So hexokinase transfer a phosphate group from ATP to glucose to make it more chemically reactive. Okay, so as you see here, glucose 6-phosphate cannot receive any, any more phosphate. So therefore, they must transform into its isomer, which is fructose 6 phosphate, okay, which has neither CH2OH to allow them to receive neither phosphate group. So it's converted to its isomer, which is fructose 6 phosphate, okay. Followed by the second ATP use, which is fructose 6 phosphate receive ATP phosphate binds to CH2OH here become fructose 1 6 biphosphate which attached to carbon number 1 and carbon number 6 okay so it becomes fructose 1 6 biphosphate okay okay so once it becomes the fructose 1 6 biphosphate okay so you see here this structure has a lot of energy okay and with the enzyme aldolase it cut the sugar molecule into two different three carbon sugars, okay, which is our isomers. We have G3P and DHAP. Okay, so the isomerase enzyme catalyzes the reversible conversion between the two isomers, DHAP and G3P. But only G3P is used in the next reaction. So therefore, to fully utilize this DHAP, where the enzyme isomerase is converted into G3P. Okay. So since this is only used, only the G3P is used. This becomes this. Okay. DHAP becomes G3P because this one is only used. Okay, so we look next into the energy payoff phase. Okay, so you see here, G3P are used. Okay. So, 
G3PIOs, there are two sequential reactions in which G3P is oxidized by the transfer of electron to NAD+, forming NADH. So as you can see here, okay, G3P lose electron. Okay, they are oxidized, lose, lose electron to NAD+, NAD+ producing NADH. Okay, next step, which is on the phosphate group attached to the oxidized G3P okay, forming high energy 1,3 biphosphoglycerate. So this is the first stage in which the NADH are produced. Please note, okay, the number 2 above here indicates that Two G3P are used because the dihydroxyester phosphate has been converted into G3P. So that is why we have two G3P, two NAD+, two NADH, two molecules of 1,3 biphosphoglycerate. So that's why we have number two here. So the enzyme responsible for this is triose phosphate dehydrogenase, which is two uh, st uh, reaction, oxidation, okay, and then production of NADH and also the formation of 1,3 biphosphoglycerate. So this is high. This have a high amount of energy. Imagine here we have two molecules of 1,3 biphosphoglycerate. So this is we have four phosphate group here. One, one, two, three, four. Okay, four phosphate group. Okay, so next is the energy pair phase. Okay, so one three by phosphoglycerate with the enzyme phosphoglycerokinase. Okay, the phosphate group from the 1,3 by phosphoglycerate is transferred to ADP to produce two molecules of ATP in an exogenic reaction. So this is a substrate level phosphorylation. It gives you two molecules of 1,3 by phosphate, two ADP, two molecules of ATP. So it becomes three phosphoglycerate. So next, the three phosphoglycerate Okay, undergoes isomerization by the with the enzyme phosphoglycerolutase, producing two phosphoglycerate by the relocation of the phosphate group. So isomerization process, phosphate group move from carbon number three into carbon number two. Okay, next the next step. Okay, enolase enzyme. Removal of water caused the double bond to form in the substrate. Water molecules removed produces double bond. Okay, with the enzyme enolase. Okay, produces phosphoenol pyruvate, which is a high energy compound. Okay, so the formation of uh, PEP here. This is high energy compound, therefore they can release the final two phosphate of uh, the PEP to become pyruvate. Okay, so PEP, okay, transfer the phosphate to ADP, produces two ATP by substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, so this is the second of the substrate level phosphorylation, yeah. So the end product, we have two molecules of pyruvate. So we have energy investment phase, and is used to power up glucose molecule, and the payoff phase is to remove all the ATP, okay, to produce ATP by substrate level phosphorylation. And this pyruvate will then move on to enter the mitochondria to undergo pyruvate oxidation. Okay, so and that's all.
for glycolysis. Okay, and we will proceed to the next step, which is pyruvate oxidation, and then the Krebs cycle. Okay, should you have any question, consult your lecturer. Okay, for further explanation and understanding. Okay, thank you and see you again. Bye bye. Assalamualaikum.